McLaren is back among Formula One's biggest teams after a third place finish in the 2020 Constructors' Championship. While it would be premature to proclaim McLaren is now part of a new big three toppling Ferrari and standing alongside Mercedes and Red Bull, 2020 was a major milestone in its bid to return to winning ways. McLaren's last gasp triumph in the season-long fight for third marked its first top three finish in the championship since 2012 and it cemented 2020 as McLaren's most important season since it last won a title way back in 2008 when Lewis Hamilton earned his first crown. McLaren's best of the rest victory is a significant achievement for a team that finished ninth just three years earlier. It's confirmation the team is on the right trajectory and has firmly put the difficulties of the middle stages of the last decade behind it while also boosting McLaren's prize fund by a few million dollars in the process. McLaren has either successfully fixed or is on the way to eliminating many of the weaknesses that led to its fall, which stretched beyond engine supplier Honda's problems from 2015 to 17 and were laid bare by its initial struggles after switching to Renault for 2018. The process is far from complete, but McLaren has seen tangible gains. It's no foregone conclusion that the team will be able to hold on to third in 2021. Despite the boost of a switch from Renault to Mercedes engines and the recruitment of Daniel Ricciardo to replace Ferrari-bound Carlos Sainz, McLaren should remain in the midfield group with the potential of Ferrari taking a big step with its engine package. McLaren has also had to rely on other qualities other than outright speed to take third in 2020, which is far from a criticism given it shows how strong those aspects of its game were. McLaren had on average the fourth fastest car in dry qualifying sessions with Racing Point the quickest of the midfield group but those five teams, completed by Ferrari, Renault and Alfa Tauri, were covered by just 0.366% in terms of average performance. And this is the key measure, with McLaren edging closer to the outright pace in 2020 compared to 2019, despite Mercedes having made a bigger step forward than anticipated. McLaren also produced a car that worked well across a range of circuits and was conceived to open up new avenues of performance, so third place confirms progress on that score. There were also no major weaknesses for McLaren relative to its midfield rivals. While the caveat must be added that Racing Point was docked 15 points for illegally designed brake ducts, McLaren's consistency was laudable. In the grand scheme of things, had the season finished a race sooner and McLaren been fourth, it would have made little difference. But the fact McLaren was able to finish third is the ultimate validation of the path it has taken under the leadership of team principal Andreas Seidel, technical director James Key and CEO Zach Brown. This is a team that has now unquestionably regained its confidence and can be sure-footed in its plans for the future. McLaren's final Renault-powered car, the MCL35, was an update of the 2019 machine still with the old-fashioned looking wide nose and inboard loaded front wing, but with changes to the tub that allowed a higher mounted front suspension. This in turn facilitated more aggressively proportioned side pods. There was also a totally new rear suspension, picking up from a different part of the gearbox and facilitating better mechanical dynamics. That created a benign, sweet handling machine and this played a part in driver Sainz and Lando Norris inevitably getting something close to the best from it constantly. The McLaren was good under braking and would switch its tyres on from cold temperatures more readily than most, even helping Sainz briefly lead in Portugal. But Key admits the McLaren had initially only been around 50% successful in addressing the previous car's weak points. It lacked the ultimate downforce of the racing point and had a few peculiarities that could catch it out, such as the sensitivity to wind direction and following another car closely. The MCL35 was also more competitive through medium and high speed corners than slow ones. This was quite possibly a function of the wide nose concept, which was hurriedly addressed with a narrower nose before the end of September homologation of that component in readiness for 2021. The deadline was in place as part of the cost-saving rules designed to limit development of major mechanical parts in 2020, and to make that deadline, McLaren had to introduce the new nose before the package around it had been fully developed. It made its debut on Sainz's car from Mugello and took a few races to get it working properly, during which time Racing Point and Renault pulled away. But from the Nürburgring onwards, the new nose became the standard spec. The nose, accompanying a tweaked front wing that appeared at Sochi, freed up more potential to fully address the car's issues. Key admitted that the normal way of working with development parts didn't apply. It was a very rushed process, in certain areas we were missing something and we backtracked a bit, but the majority stayed. 
And it paid off in the end, indicating McLaren is not only on the up as a racing team, but also has the development prowess to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with its well-financed immediate opposition. Just a few hours before the race that secured McLaren's championship finish came another major moment, the £185 million sale of a 15% stake, rising to as much as 33% to a consortium of US investors. McLaren's F1 team has been on a relatively healthy footing with good future prospects under its leadership, but it was vulnerable as part of a wider McLaren group in serious financial difficulty. Chairman Paul Walsh was brought in at the start of 2020 and said serious work had been required to correct the company's fundamentally fragile business model. McLaren made redundancies early in 2020, including among the racing division, after a major early year cash influx from majority owner Bahrain's Montalacat Group. But it also had to get a $150 million loan from Bahrain's National Bank as well, and started the process of selling its Woking headquarters and leasing it back long term to raise funds. McLaren's participation in Formula 1 was not hanging in the balance during all this, but financial uncertainty would have undermined and potentially even permanently limited its progress in the long term. It risked major infrastructure projects like its new wind tunnel and simulator grind into a halt, causing major disruption behind the scenes and forcing key people to leave. So the long-term risk was McLaren slipping into a vicious cycle not dissimilar to the one that engulfed Williams, with a lack of cash breeding poor performance, poor results and poor financial reward. But if there was confidence this would be avoided before, it's now rooted in reality. The team admits it would have been extremely difficult to make further progress without new investment and ambitions would have had to be lowered. Now it has that investment, which reduces further pressure on the McLaren group while also reinforcing the inherent strength of the F1 team. The upshot is McLaren not only has serious momentum and opportunity in F1 for the first time in several years, it also has the means to exploit it. A return to Mercedes power and introduction of a $145 million budget cap in 2021, allied with major new technical rules in 2022, create a clear window for it to bridge the gap that has emerged to the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull. Plus, the aforementioned major infrastructure projects have been approved to give it the resources it needs. So that technology, with the right personnel in place and the means to operate at the budget cap, will eliminate many of McLaren's meaningful deficits to F1's current benchmarks. So McLaren says it can now have its cake and eat it, which means playing to win in Formula 1 again. And the progress underlined by its 2020 season suggests it can support those bold words with action. But how impressed were you by McLaren in 2020? And when do you think it will win in Formula 1 again? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and click subscribe if you've not already done so to keep up with more F1 videos from the race in the future.